only one in 10 U.S. cars are electric or hybrid vehicles. Mm -hmm. I have a hybrid. Mm -hmm. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, Florida and Texas rank second and third collectively for the most EV cars on the road. But as more EVs hit the road, so do the risks, especially during hurricane season in flood-prone states. AccuWeather's Leslie Hudson is live in Central Florida with a closer look at the hidden fire mm -hmm. dangers tied to salt water flooding and EV fires. Hey, good morning to you, Bernie. Yeah, we are uh, in downtown Orlando, not an area that would be a concern for salt water, but the message is for any hurricane prone state, Florida, the Gulf Coast, all the way up the Atlantic seaboard. If you're in an area where you can see salt water and you have an EV, you need to be thinking about what you're going to do in the event that there is a, a storm that comes your way, because fire officials say it's not just the flooding from that storm surge that's a concern. It's what happens after the storm leads leaves and the floodwaters recede because salt water is a huge problem for EVs all across uh, these Gulf Coast and hurricane prone states. So what happens is, of course, when these EVs get submerged or partially submerged in salt water, that causes the battery to short circuit. But what a lot of EV owners don't realize is that the fire risk can continue days, weeks or even months after that storm has passed. And it's hard to tell that your actual EV has had some type of damage unless you've had a professional look at it. So that combination of saltwater flooding, flooding and lithium ion batteries is a proven recipe for disaster. You know from this viral video last year in Sarasota where a Tesla flooded during Hurricane Helene and then caught fire and it not only burned down the garage but its home as well. Saltwater conducts electricity and when it seeps into that sealed EV battery compartment it can trigger ex extreme heat corrosion and what's called thermal runaway. That's a chain reaction inside the battery pack that can lead to explosions or multi-hour long fires. It, it can it burn an environment where other combustibles don't, producing its own oxygen, uh, producing its own heat and a thermal runaway. Uh, the lithium batteries are going to burn in excess of 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and all of these things together make them a very difficult challenge for uh, fire service in general. So several EVs caught fire in Collier County after Hurricane Ian in 2022. In one case, a fire truck actually ran out of water trying to put the blaze out, only for that same car to reignite six hours later. Firefighters say EV fires can require 10 to 12 times more water than a standard car fire. That's because EV batteries have their own fuel source. So even when the fire appears to be out, that heat and chemical chain reaction can restart without warning. EVs are less likely, though, to catch fire than gas cars. So that is important to remember. Under normal conditions, it's not a problem. It's when that salt water gets into those motors, into those batteries, that it can change the game. And with EV ownership uh, on the rise, officials say that challenge is only growing. So if you have an EV vehicle and you live in a hurricane prone state, uh, they're asking you to be thinking ahead what you're going to do with your car in the needs you need to evacuate. And believe it or not, a lot of officials say, take them to the charging stations. This here in downtown Orlando can actually charge about 20 EVs at a time. So it's a larger city. There's more uh, room for charging, but it's also a probably going to fill up pretty quickly, but they're saying think ahead, get it out of the way of that storm surge. And if you live on an island, perhaps a barrier island, uh, you want to definitely get it off that island because you have to remember if your EV gets damaged, they you can't push that out of the uh, out of the way. You have to tow it off the island. So they're just wanting you to think ahead as we continue into this hurricane season. Uh, you know, we're in the height of hurricane season later this week. So they're just trying to remind folks to have a plan ready because a lot of times when these storms happen, you forget about these little things that need you need to do to help yourself stay safe. Reporting in Orlando, Florida, I'm Leslie Hudson. Back mm -hmm. you. Back to you. You always teach us something, Leslie. Always. We learned a lot from that.